Hey folks, Steve Johnson with supercub.org here. I want to show you some uh, kind of nifty tools that I use. Um, the communication between ForeFlight and Google Earth. Maybe you have done this before, maybe you haven't. If you use ForeFlight on your iPad or your iPhone, um, you know it's a pretty great flight planning tool. But you may or may not be familiar first with the fact that you can access it online as well too with a regular web browser. You just log in with the same credentials and it makes it really easy to flight plan. It's a great interface and uh, hey. has all of your information right there uh, inside of the web page as well. When I'm flying with ForeFlight, one of the things I do is I generate track logs because I sometimes like to go back and see what happened. So I'm going to go down here to track logs. Now, you can see here's one typical track log. I'm going to look for one from a little further back. Uh, here is one from June. Actually, this is a flight from Joseph, Oregon, across Hell's Canyon, over to the Johnson Creek Airport in Idaho. Now, ForeFlight gives me some ability to zoom in on these things and look at it, so it has some ability built into it that is actually pretty nice. But the real magic happens when you take this out of ForeFlight and put it over into Google Earth. And that's what we're going to do now. All we have to do to do this is click this download option up here and download a KML file. We're going to use the full version. I'm not even sure what filter it is. I'm going to call it track log and just save it here on my desktop. Then I'm going to move over to the Google Earth app. Now, Google Earth has changed from being a desktop app application, excuse me, uh, to being a web accessed application at earth.google.com. Now this happened some time ago, but some of you folks might not have used it for a while. It's really a, a great tool now. So I need to import my KML file, but in order to do that, Right now, I don't see the option to do that. So I have to go over here to the settings. And at the very bottom of the settings is an option to enable KML file import, experimental. So that's what we're going to do. Now, when we go back to our places, right here, my places, I have this import KML file option. I'm choosing that. I'm going to open the file. And I think we called it track log, and there it is. Now that file is imported, and it zooms me right in to that uh, place that uh, I was at before. Now, we can go right here to where I started in Joseph, Oregon. Let's have a look at that. I was departing Joseph. Now you'll notice that it shows me a little bit gives me an idea of how high I was as well too. But where we can really take advantage of this is if we click this 3D option. Now we can really see kind of exactly what we were altitude wise and that sort of thing. In fact it is as we were climbing out of Joseph, Oregon about right here that we heard a very loud pop that you normally don't hear in an airplane. We were nervous for a minute and then we smelled the potato chips. Now, what happens next? We're flying over the Hell's Canyon area as we're going out here, so it's kind of neat to just drag along this. We can zoom out a little bit to make it faster. Here's Hell's Canyon right here, I believe. It's on the Oregon Idaho border. It's a beautiful thing to fly over. You can zoom in this. There's the Snake River running down there. And you get an idea of how the terrain changes with this 3D view. Now let's go all the way over back to the Johnson Creek Airport, where we landed in Yellow Pine, Idaho. We're going to zoom right in on that. You can see that I flew a uh, down, flew an upwind and then I flew a downwind, which is what's prescribed. Landing south of the Johnson Creek Airport is what's prescribed, winds permitting. And I'm in 3D mode. Now another thing that's kind of neat here, let's go back into 2D for a minute and have a look at this. But watch what happens when I click this 3D mode here. It starts a little bit of a pan around the uh, pan around and show me uh, from all angles kind of what's going on there. You can actually fly the entire route again at any speed that you choose, and it'll give you that perspective view as well too. But that's a topic for another video. 
So that's all there is to it, to working with uh, ForeFlight and Google Earth. So now, uh, those of you who are interested in seeing another example of this same thing, we're going to jump back into ForeFlight. I'm going to go back to my track logs here, and I'm going to pick the very last flight that I flew, which was on November 28th. Uh, did a flight with a student. Now, it's going to take me over to that area, which is way back over here in Kansas City, right here. Again, notice how in ForeFlight I'm kind of having to jockey around a little bit to... Uh, to get this all working, but I'm going to go back up here again to download. I'm going to export to a KML file, and it's going to be give me a new name, track log one. And I'm going to go back over here to Google Earth, go to my places, and import another KML file from files. And since I know it's called track log one, I'm just going to pick that and hit open. Now Google Earth is going to transport me magically all the way back to Kansas City. And here we are. Now it's showing me the entire route where we take off at the downtown Kansas City Airport and we head up to the Sherman Airport to do some pattern work. Now, this is with a fairly new student, so the pattern may patterns may not look uh, quite like they do with uh, you pilots who've been flying for a long time, but we're getting better at it. There was a little wind that day also. Now let's click this 3D view again. This is a great flight instructing tool to be able to go back with the student afterwards and look at what their patterns looked like and look at what their altitude variation was during this uh, the course of the lesson. Now, the how this is recorded is only as good as the GPS and where you have your iPad or iPhone located. If you're connected to a device that has a better GPS in it, uh, then certainly this will be more accurate. So take that into consideration as well, too. Once again, I can go back from 2D to 3D, and it'll fly me around here and uh, let me look at the whole shoot and match. So that's about it. Just a kind of a neat tool uh, to move information back and forth between these two applications and get another view of uh, what you've been doing. I hope uh, you enjoyed this and can make use of it as well. See you later.